Thank you for turning to page 121. Today we're going to take a look at the Stone of Good Luck or the Luck Stone out of the Dungeon Master Guide and how we use it in our campaign and, and why I consider it a really good early magic item for players. Also going to show you a gift from my player Roy, the Bowling Shirt of Destiny. It's a, a special DM shirt he got. There's a bunch of stuff on the back. I'm going to I'll lay the shirt out flat and I'll show you. Uh, but uh, this is a a congratulatory gift uh, upon my attaining a thousand subscribers. So I have to thank you as well for making the thousand subscribers possible. Uh, I thought it was very nice of Roy to go ahead and order this up for me. It's customized. It's really neat. I like it a lot. Uh, I also want to remind everybody I am still looking for subscribers. Uh, channel's been growing, but uh, still about 45% of my views come from non-subscribers. Let's go ahead and close that loop. Uh, go ahead and, and bump up the subscription rate. I would really appreciate it. Help the channel continue to grow. I also have a Patreon uh, with its first offering called The Oath uh, for AD&D. It's a little something I wrote. Uh, it's actually non-world specific. It's not even game specific. But uh, I thought it might be something you're interested in. Any level Patreon, uh, we'll get that download for free as a PDF. It's only about seven or eight pages long. Uh, so that's it, but back to today's topic, the stone of good luck, and my good luck of having this spiffy new shirt. Today on page 121. As promised, a closer look at the shirt. Uh, as you can see, it says d d it's got my name, Tony, on it. And Dungeon Master, this is the back of the shirt. And coming down, the weaver of lore and fate. The gods fear the power that I wield. The dice are my ally and my enemy. This is one busy shirt. Uh, that's why I'm calling it the Bowling Shirt of Destiny. On the right sleeve, you've got a little logo that says Dungeon Master. Right there. And on the left sleeve, the little and symbol for a current edition of D&D. &D. I was very pleased to get this. I thought this was very nice. Roy ordered it uh, right after I got 1,000 subscribers, but it took a little while to arrive. But I appreciate the heck out of the gift. I thought it was very nice. Thank you, Roy. I appreciate it. Thanks, everybody that got me to 1,000 subscribers to, to prompt Roy to buy this for me. But I really appreciate it. I, I really get touched when one of my players will give me something just as kind of a way of saying, hey, thanks for the extra work of being the DM. It, it always means a lot to me. So, Roy, thank you again. And um, now on with the video as scheduled. Okay, the Stone of Good Luck or Luck Stone out of the Dungeon Master Guide. This is one of my favorite magic items in all of D&D. Uh, it's an early give out for me usually. It's a thousand experience points for the player to get it. And yes, we do a thousand, a thousand experience points. Uh, we do uh, experience points for magic items still. Uh, let me double check that it's a thousand. Uh, Stone of Good Luck. Luckstone, no, it's 3,000 experience points. So it's one you've got to wait a little bit to give out. You can't give it out, you know, first level or anything like that. And frankly, it's a little powerful for first level. But uh, it's a good one nonetheless. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on it. And there we have it, the Stone of Good Luck, otherwise called the Luckstone. And basically what it says, I'll just read the description. This magic stone, magical stone is typically a bit of rough, polished agate or similar mineral. Its possessor gains a plus one, that's plus five percent where applicable, on all dice rolls involving factors such as saving, slipping, dodging, etc. Whenever a die or dice are rolled to find whether the character has an adverse happening befall or not. This luck does not affect the characters to hit and damage dice or spell failure dice. Additionally, the Luck Stone gives the Possessor a plus or minus 1 to plus or minus 10% at the owner's option on rolls for determination of magical items or division of treasure. The most favorable results will always be gained with a Stone of Good Luck. So that's a, a short description for a really good magic item. And what this really means is, of course, your player gets plus 1 saving throw uh, versus magic. So if it's save versus spell and they you know, need an eight, then it's plus one on their die roll. So they throw a seven, the seven becomes plus one, becomes an eight, and they make their saving throw. So that's one of the advantages of it. And the other is uh, for, I allow the dice modifier on any kind of dexterity check 
or a constitution check or anything like that, because it does state that it will help with that kind of roll, whenever a dice roll for saving throw, slipping, dodging, etc. So I will give it for that as well. So anytime it's going to influence anything that's going to directly impact the player, I'll generally give them a plus one or 5% bonus to whatever it is they're rolling. Uh, and this would be things that are going to overtly hurt them. It says expressly that it will not matter for uh, magic spell failure, which there is a percentage if you're too uh, low intelligence to cast certain spells. Uh, that's fine. I really don't like, allow it to affect anything like if you're reading a scroll and there's a percentage chance of failure, I don't allow it to affect that because it seems to me that it's excluded by the writing. And then the Luckstone gives its possessor plus or minus 1 to 10% at the owner's option on rolls to determine magic items or division of treasure. Now, the way we divide magic items, uh, if we find, uh, you know, there's a treasure trove and we find four magic items, and there are, or we'll say five, because there are five magic items, there are five players. Generally, the way we do it is everybody will roll a d20. The highest person will get to pick any of the five magic items that happen to be there. And then the next, for the four remaining items, we throw again. You don't get to keep the same dice, you throw again. And now the highest person gets to pick of the four, and then roll again for the three, roll again for the two, and then the last one left goes to the last person. Once everybody has one magic item, then the cycle starts again. If there happens to be a knight, uh, I gave out a dragon treasure trove years ago, and we spent a good chunk of the game where they actually got the treasure trove just rolling for, we call it rolling for pick. Um, now, there are times that you're going to want to have the advantage of the dice, and there are times you're going to want a disadvantage, and I'll explain that. Times for the advantage. Uh, there's a magical sword as part of the treasure trove, and you and two of the other players want it. Well, that'd be a good time to add 10% to your dice roll. In that case, player rolls a natural 20, and uh, the player with the luck stone rolls a 19. His roll actually becomes a 21. In our game, at our table, that will defeat the 20 in that case, and he'll get to pick the magic item that he wants. Conversely, there might be a situation where, for whatever reason, you don't want any of the treasure. You want to say there's two magic items, but you're not interested in either one. By our game, you can opt out of rolling for that. You can just say, well, I'm not interested in anything. I don't want it. But it really kind of depends on the situation. If it's magic nobody's really all that interested in, those are situations we do make everybody roll. You know, it's a plus one dagger and you already have a plus one dagger. Well, you're going to get a backup. Oh, I don't want to blow my pick for that. Well, too bad. Now, the other guy who's left in the, the pick doesn't want to either. Well, if that's the case, then the guy with the luck stone can go ahead and modify his die down. So if he rolls, for instance, an 11, and his opponent rolls a 10, he can modify his 11 down to a 9, and the opponent wins. We do allow that, and we don't allow any repercussions against a player for using a luck stone. Generally, when, the way we play, generally all the magic items that everybody's carrying are in some way or another known to the other players. Uh, we don't allow retaliation or anything against a person just using a luck stone because that wouldn't be fair to the person. But I do insist the player characters stick with their alignment if they have a luck stone. For instance, if I have a lawful good character, um, I'm going to have a really hard time justifying using the luck stone to essentially cheat on a die roll. Uh, to gain a magic item that I want, but uh, maybe the rest of the group could also use. That's not really, in my mind, lawful good behavior. So that is a situation where uh, I would penalize the player or I would make him you know, clearly play his alignment. In that case, he wouldn't use the Luck Stone for that. Now, there may be times that he would use the Luck Stone. If it's a magic item that he feels that he could truly use to a superior benefit to the group and another player who's vying for it wouldn't do as well, then he could make justification that way. I'm fine with that as long as it's something that's consistent with how the play character has been played to that point. Uh, I, I don't want situational ethics, but I will accept an explanation for why something might be done at a time that ordinarily I wouldn't have allowed it. Uh, anybody, of course, uh, even a law lawful neutral, I would also give a little bit of a problem using a lock stone to, quote, cheat, unquote, party members. But I, again, I'm not going to get real hung up on a lawful neutral because he's, oh, I'm neutral. I, I still go for myself. And then pretty much the rest of the alignments I'm okay with. Chaotic good, neutral good. I have no problem with that. 
um, that part of their ethos, their beliefs are that they'll go ahead and they'll just take advantage for themselves. Maybe the chaotic good, again, feels it's an item he could use to superior benefit. Maybe the neutral good feels that, you know, he's the one that should wield it. So I, I don't worry too much about that. I'm not trying to penalize the lawful good character, but I do want the, him to play a lawful good character. So that's really it uh, about uh, the Stone of Good Luck. I I just I find this a really good magic item to give out. Uh, 3,000 experience points. If I were to give this out early, early, uh, I, I did a campaign years ago where all the players started out with a magic item. It was a family heirloom. One of the players said, hey, can I have a Luck Stone? I said, sure. He started his character with zero experience points with the Luck Stone. In that case, because it was an heirloom item, I did not give experience points for the players starting out with it. That was a really good campaign, by the way. It built a lot, and it built a lot of heritage into the campaign. The characters really gained depth and uh, a cause for existing because they were wielding the, you know, the father's sword or the stone of good luck given by the grandmother and things like that. It really added some nice depth to it. That ended up being a really good uh, campaign. It was kind of, I ca called it kind of the heirloom campaign. Um, but then as the characters went up in level, I also had it where they recovered some treasure that had been in the family for this guy or this guy. And it was recovered and now usable by the players. So it was a, a fun little theme. I did that uh, back in the early 90s, I want to say. So that's all I've got to say about the Stone of Good Luck. Uh, I like it. I, I think it's a magic item that if you took out the experience points or maybe cut it down to 1,000, that you could give in a nice low level to a character. Uh, and it's not really going to hurt anything. I would not give 3,000 experience point award for it because all of a sudden your first level character is going to be second looking at third. But I would definitely go ahead and consider giving out some experience points for it. So that's all I've got to say about the Stone of Good Luck. Uh, thanks for watching. Again, please, you know, subscribe if you haven't. If you have, thank you. Uh, Patreon is still out there. And uh, all I can say is good luck on all your die rolls from page 121.